Hello and welcome to this edition of the Empathic Designer Podcast. I'm your host, Raji Shwin. So today, we are continuing our storyboarding series where we are looking at some of the less common storyboards in the L&D space. So today, we are going to be talking about storyboarding for mobile applications. So let's get started. So the first element of a mobile storyboard is the application map itself. So an application map gives us a high-level overview of the application itself, the blueprint of the application. This will vary based on whether you are creating a native application versus a web-based application. Application maps are particularly significant for native applications as it helps us keep us on track of all the components that go into it. As we build the rest of the storyboard, we will be circling back to this map to identify the position of the screens or assets that we have designed and also make sure that the various components still work with each other. This is especially important because when we are working on the individual pages or assets of a mobile application, we as creative people tend to get a lot of new ideas and these ideas might result in us digressing from the central core design principles that we have agreed for the particular mobile application. And this actually gets a little more complicated when you are working on a rather complex application involving multiple designers. So this is really going to help us stay on track with our designs. So the second component that we are going to be looking at in a mobile storyboard is the connections. Connections, as the name suggests, is where we define how the various elements of the storyboard are connected with each other. This is especially important when we are creating non-linear applications and applications that integrate Internet of Things or sub-functions like chatbots. This is one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of using Microsoft Word or PowerPoint for storyboarding mobile applications. Because if we are talking about non-linear applications especially, the instructions that we need to give become really complex for our programmers to adopt and for our stakeholders to really understand. And when we're looking at complex application, beyond a point, it really takes us for a spin itself. So there are some applications that can be used for creating such storyboards. So I'm going to talk to you about some of the applications that are there right now. I would recommend checking out tools like Sketch, Figma or Adobe XD. I'm planning to check out Sketch and Figma in the coming days and I'll keep you posted on that. The third important element of a mobile application storyboard is the component list. Components are the building blocks of your application. This could range from inbuilt pages to any external asset or pages that you will be linking to. When working on components, make sure that they follow the same design language as the rest of the application and also has a logical flow from a content perspective. If you are deploying third-party assets, make sure that you have the appropriate permissions from the authors before deploying those and also make sure that they observe the same design language as the rest of your application. The final element of a mobile application storyboard is the interactive elements itself. So the interactions is all about how the users will be engaged with the application. Make sure that the interactions are easy and intuitive for your users. There are a set of universally accepted standards when it comes to creating such interactivities for mobile applications. So check out the link below for uh, more information on this particular topic. I'm also putting a link of the same in the description section of this video. So there you go. You have your four elements of your mobile application storyboard. Thanks a lot for tuning into this edition of the Empathic Designer Podcast. If you like what you heard, make sure to hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon for getting regular updates from my channel. If you have any questions or would like to talk to me, you can post them in the comment section below and I'll be glad to answer your questions. Thank you and have a wonderful day.